For today's adventure, we're in the green pastures of Kitsilano. With me on camera, as always, is Rick Von Schmidt. Today, we're exploring the Museum of Vancouver. It's a great place, all right. The museum's got lots of awesome exhibits that tell the story of Vancouver's history. And look at that roof. Architect Gerald Hamilton was inspired by the iconic woven hat of the Haida First Nations when he designed it. If you saw my recent vlogs on time capsules buried around the city, you'll recall this one outside the museum. It's going to be open for Canada's bicentennial, July 1st, 2067. And I'll be here when they do. We're going to see some of the museum's exhibits today, including the phenomenal room of old neon signs. And in a minute, I'm going to tell you a secret about that room that even the staff here don't know about. And Rick, you want to cue up your Von Schmidt Orchestra for a little music as we go through the museum? The museum has a dramatic lobby. Don't forget to look up at the stained glass ceiling. As you go through the museum, the exhibits tell the story of Vancouver through the decades. In the early 1900s, streetcar lines stretched south and east, and new developments were encouraged. And if you saw my recent vlog on Japantown, you'll know a little bit of the history of the various communities that made Vancouver home. Folks here dreamed of a safe and prosperous place, but those dreams were tested by a racist riot in 1907, an economic collapse in 1913, and World War in 1914. In 1929, the city of Vancouver joined together with the neighboring towns of South Vancouver and Point Grey. We became Canada's third largest city, but the stock market crashed and Vancouver went through some tough times. When Canada entered World War II, Vancouver factories and shipyards geared up for record production. Ooh, here's a first taste of some of that great neon signage. Looks like an old-fashioned beauty salon. Yikes! That doesn't look comfortable. After World War II, veterans' families watched television in their new houses, and everyone had hopeful dreams of a good life. In the 1950s, young Vancouverites drove cool cars, went to movies and nightclubs, and listened to rock and roll on the jukebox. In a recent vlog, I explored Elvis Presley's visit to Vancouver in 1957. Ooh, lots of soda pop choices back then. Looks like downtown was the place to be. I wonder what they're doing in the back of the car here. Let's see. Ooh, white spot treats. Incredible. In the 60s and 70s, Vancouver was the hippie capital of Canada. And I say that's far out in the end. The museum has recreated a Kitsilano apartment where locals grooved on some fine music and fashion. After the hippies chilled out in here for a while, they went out and fought against the city's plans for a freeway through town. Those good long hairs were saving neighborhoods. The museum is opening a special exhibit in Chinatown soon called A Seat at the Table. It's all about the Chinese-Canadian experience in British Columbia, including a look at food and restaurant culture. It'll be at 29 East Pender Street, and it's going to be incredible. The museum's got some great exhibits on the area's indigenous people, including the Haida culture, which developed a very sophisticated society. The Haida people have a passion for fashion and classy attire. Look at these amazing spruce root hats. These are the hats that inspired the museum's roof. This is just a small piece of the museum's significant tribute to local indigenous people. All right, we've reached the magic neon sign room. By the late 1950s, Vancouver had one neon sign for every 18 residents, an estimated 19,000 signs, more than Las Vegas. And our signs were the subject of some hot debates. Like me, some people loved them for their excitement and big city exuberance, but other people thought they were tasteless and tawdry. In 1974, the city enacted a new sign bylaw, and many of the signs were removed from city streets. These retired signs here at the museum 
lit up Vancouver nights from the 1950s to the 1970s. Let's look at a few in particular that caught my eye. If you saw my recent vlog on Jimi Hendrix, you'll remember the Smiling Buddha Cabaret at 109 East Hastings Street. Members of the band 5440 saved this 800-pound beauty from the scrapyard after the cabaret closed. Max Billiards was at 150 Lonsdale Avenue in North Vancouver. Hootie the Owl here advertised the Rexall Drugstore at 41st and Granville. Ooh, ooh, it looks like somebody had a bad accident. Better get that fender fixed. And this fella sure likes getting his clothes clean in a hurry. I highly recommend the Museum of Vancouver. I've only covered a small sample of the immense collections and exhibits here. My thanks to Marketing and Communications Manager Lorenzo Schober for his hospitality today. And shout outs to Sharon McRae and Judith Starrett. Damn, that's gonna do it. I hope you... Yeah, what's that, Rick? The secret to this room? Oh, yeah. If you get the sudden urge to laugh when you're in here, it's because there are echoes of the city's funniest people. Around 1995, before these great signs were on display, this was the temporary performance space of the Vancouver Theater Sports League. I was one of the performers, and I bored, yeah, I mean entertained, audiences right here. Hope you enjoyed this little taste of old Vancouver as she once was. My thanks to Bev Sugarman for makeup and Jewel Hailmere for wardrobe. On behalf of Rick and myself, thanks for watching and subscribing. And until next time, catch a good beat.